So when we moved to our land, we had a goal, and one of those goals was to be extremely self-sufficient as much as possible. We really wanted to learn everything that we had to learn about our property, about our cabin. Um, we wanted to do everything ourselves. And one of those things is processing firewood. Now we have a ton of dead ash. Um, in New York State, there's like a disease, like a bug or something going through all the ash trees and it's killing them all. And we have a lot on our property and it needs to come down. Specifically, we have one where we want our future root cellar to go. And it's quite a ways away from where we actually process our firewood. We kind of like to keep things neat and organized as much as possible on a homestead. It's really difficult. But one of the ways that we're going to try to do that, we're going to try to get this, you know, very large tree out without doing too much chainsawing and cutting to prevent all that sawdust from being where we don't want it. Um, one of the ways we're going to do it is using something called a log sled. And specifically, we are making a go devil log sled or like a log skid. So basically the point of it is to get a very large log out of your woods, out of your property, without getting it full of dirt and muck and mud and not putting a trench in your, your lawn. And in this video, you can meet my husband, Ben, who does all of our firewood. Very thankful for that. And we'll be doing pretty much all of the work today. All right, guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. So this Y is just what we took out of the tree I cut down because it was it's a dead ash. We've got a big problem with you know the emerald borers are killing all the ash trees in the northeast. But they make awesome firewood. But taking this one down that was kind of close to our barn over there, uh, I just spotted this kind of perfect Y for a log skid. And you could spend some money obviously and buy different stuff, or you could just make it out of the natural resources on your property. But if you've got a nice even Y like this, it can actually spread out the weight. Um, so I just cut it out with the saw at a little bit of an angle. And then I'm gonna shape this down a little bit, but really the idea behind it is I can set my log on this side of it and then strap it to this log that I've cut or this, this skid. And then if I can smooth this down a little bit, it's gonna distribute the weight. So as I'm dragging with a Bronco or a four wheeler around the property, I'm not tearing up the ground. It's gonna move a lot quicker, a lot smoother, and it's, it's easier to steer and maneuver. So I'm gonna work on it with the ax a little bit, get it ready, and then we'll, uh, we'll hook up and drag the rest of this tree out of here. Uh, well, we're figuring out a way to get this tree out of here. Why? So we can have a root cellar. You film this. You know the wood isn't bad in there. Once you get past the outer layer. You can actually see the the disease or whatever the bugs yeah these damaged. d shapes the, the trench it's yeah created. that's the trench but here's where they go in if you see these on your tree it means mm -hmm. one went in and they tunnel all through there Yeah, here's the smooth side. 
did it all with the axe and the knife and absolutely chainsawed it down. But really I'm just smoothing this edge out as much as I could. Kind of rounding here and it's just slow work. I'm gonna need a razor sharp axe. I sharpen this thing all the time. This is not a wood splitter. This is, um, it's Grand Force Brook. It's a great axe, but it's a forest axe. It's meant to be, you know, a hand tool, but I sharpen it that sharp. You know, you can't do that with a splitting axe, but as long as you keep it super sharp and never touch the dirt with it, you don't have to sharpen it that much. But basically I just worked it like a chisel the whole way around. You see something kind of sticking up, work it in. And again, this isn't a, you know, it's okay if we have little ruts. The goal is that we can move the wood without tearing everything up as well as getting mud and everything all over the, the log you're about to cut with your chainsaw, you'll dole it up if you do that. So this keeps the mud, dirt, and the ruts away. What is the alternative if you don't have this? <laughs> spend money on this. You spend, or you, just you buy something like yard. this? Yeah. Or you rip up your yard. Does it look like this when you buy it? No. That's on there pretty solid. big stuff and obviously you can hook it down to size for the smaller stuff and then I also do have a hardcore carabiner like an actual you know, oh, yeah. utility one which we could use if it's on the smaller stuff too but ideally that should hold pretty strong Soft shackle, it's much easier. Self cinch in there, tighten up. isn't tight enough so we're going to use this. This 
thing wants to tip over. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, the shape log. of the log. I don't know if it still might just tip over, but we'll try again. point of the log skid basically is you want to keep your lumber um, or fire whatever it is clean so you're not mauling up your chainsaw digging trenches in your yard and all that and basically that's what we built real quick right here you can buy there are like official log skids you can spend a decent amount of money on them but at the end of the day for a few bucks at the hardware store um, you know a couple bolts slash screws for building I bought three foot of chain um, I did buy this ring that was welded on here so it's solid and I mean basically the, the hardest parts of the axe I just smooth it out um, to create a skid so it's rounded here and again it doesn't have to be glassy finish but you just want it to be able to travel over stuff so that's why i kind of gave it this ramp and rounded finish and then i evened them out because obviously organically they're just not going to be perfectly even um, and rounded out the back here bolt a two by four on the top i use pressure treated hopefully this thing lasts because it was a decent amount of work to put together and you drop your log on here fasten it up it's that easy and then i'm just using a regular you know this is um you know, for my bronco just a recovery strap and hooked it up to our four-wheeler and I was able to pull this pretty heavy large ash log all the way down the property without tearing it up and kept the wood clean so I'd say that worked pretty well how much money do you think we spent um I mean this stuff I already had but the chain was probably under ten dollars the hardware I had to buy a new bit I actually didn't it's something I should have had but the bit large enough I replaced so I spent today uh, about 40 bucks but two of the items were reused items that I, are just tools for the thing. So actual equipment on here is under probably about $25, I would say. Put the whole thing together. It, and probably the, not even. The underside of the log is clean. Can you roll it so we can It's pretty heavy, check? but <laughs> you can, you can see. Which is the point of the whole thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, everything is clean. No trench in the lawn. Little, little skid, which is normal. I mean, basically this way we can get, here's where I process all the firewood for the property. And I've got a lot of dead ash I'm going to be cutting out and using, but, you know, this one was leaning over our barn, so it had to come down anyway. But it's a really, you know, really solid, good piece of firewood, and it's not too rotted yet. But the main reason I cut this one down back there is I spotted that perfect Y. And I thought that that would make a perfect skid, which I wanted to make at some point anyway. So, and a lot of firewood to process out of it, too. Cut that wood up, but we'll 